Five, four, three, two, one. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. Transgression is a phrase that we use today to exemplify the fact that the boundaries can be broken and morphed in modern day filmography. During the 20th century, due to the proliferation of the media, wild scale technological advances in recording software has been an increase in the need to promote an agenda of the film. Perhaps the most famous example of this is the controversial director Quentin Tarantino, who enjoys emasculating certain characters to promote blood and violence in the majority of his work as this attracts increased viewership. Take Django Unchained, for example. Django, the main protagonist in the story, fights for freedom at the expense of killing hundreds of men in the film, and this is the main agenda of the film. However, there is a stereotypical aspect of the film that haven't changed, whereby Django is fighting against the white landowners who have incarcerated him for years. This has been present in countless films of the past, Films that contain numerous sexual encounters between characters or extreme levels of violence are considered shocking towards the audience and are transgressive due to the fact that they do not abide by the traditional norms and values of the film industry. Tarantino has been exploited the anarchy of the Wild West in Django Unchained and more recently in The Hateful Eight, where Samuel Jackson has been assigned a malicious role in both films and is the main contributor of violence towards others who are seemingly weaker than himself. The sheer scale of transgressive violence has obviously pushed the boundaries even further, with major film labels choosing to include scenes with the beating of women as well as men for interrogation. Michael Winterbottom's new work, The Killer Inside Me, has achieved notoriety for its rapt attention to the murder of its female leads. In recent interviews for The Guardian tabloid, he has had to defend his own contribution to cinema, by explaining that the main scenes of violence are not graphic in the slightest, but a true reflection of the physical destruction of a heroin addict, someone stereotypically viewed as an underclass of contemporary society today. It astonishes me how certain directors are scrutinised by the public for their work when they have a rational choice to access the movie itself. One of the main functions of the theatre in the late 20th century was to encourage and aid the assimilation of immigrants into the community, and to engage as one with popular culture. Recent studies from Jock Young have indicated that there is a far more relaxed approach to the use of aggressive scenes in the cinema environment, as we cannot escape it and we occasionally use it as a means of leisure and not something that is considered frowned upon. However, let's discuss how transgressive cinema has evolved through the generations and see the gradual change which has taken place. It's clear that moving images have a hold over us and even force us to participate in transgressive actions. Famous theorists such as Foucault suggest that there is a ritualistic element to beginning, to becoming immersed in cinema culture, and he regards it as heterotopic. Nick Zed is also credited with the introduction of the term the cinema of transgression and described a New York-based underground film movement where films would be forged using low-budget equipment with the sole purpose of causing controversy. His work also seemed philosophical in the sense that a manifesto was published under Orion Jericho in the Zine The Underground Film Bulletin, 1984-1990. Cinema has been considered a fundamentally modern art form, which has colonised the modern unconsciousness like no other media. And it also evident that in the early transgressive cinema, there has been a tendency to create films that are reportages and comedies with the audience sat in awe of the moving images. Films were used as a form of escapism during the war and were used as a source of hope for soldiers during the horrors of World War I. Fritz Lang made a monumental discovery when he introduced Metropolis in 1927. These films were called talkies and they effectively combined transgressive images with an artistic concept. The first set of original films in the 20s would exaggerate shadows in haunted houses to add suspense to the experience. Another classic example of this was the film Gollum in 1920. Recently, however, due to the rise of liberal politics and a separation from traditional right-wing conservative filmography, there has been a greater involvement with new queer cinema and more and more homosexual scenes during the 20th century. 
Brokeback Mountain is a classic example of this. Instead of keeping the traditional heterosexual relationships which you have been accustomed to, there are some cases, however, where the cinema fails to capture the audience's imagination and transport them into a different world to which they're, they're in already. For example, during the Great Depression era of the 1930s, the cinema reflected social anxiety rather than art. American cinema took a massive decline due to the collapse of the Western civilization. After the Cold War, however, directors focused on lead roles possessing dual identities, and in most cases characters who would kill others for their own pursuits. However, drugs, sex and alcohol abuse wasn't plastered onto every film, as is the case in contemporary films today, regardless of genre. During the 1980s and 90s, there was a slasher-slash-gangster era where misogyny, violence and UK gangsters were a common theme. Bloodshed in various different scenes would attract viewership once more. Film and cinema has been used to reinforce authority and the potential for audience transgression of propagandistic seduction. Alternatively, it's discussed as an isolated historical movement. Changes in the film industry mark considerable political and social change. The location and structural layout of the cinema changed from a futuristic picture palace into a post-20s depression architectural design. This is another example of how far the boundaries have been pushed to engage us with the cinematic experience. The transgression of cinema has been driven by cult films in order to del deliberately set about breaking taboos of traditional British values. The Black Swan in 2010 uses numerous amounts of lesbianism in the film, which was a controversial decision to begin with. Transgressive boundaries are still being stretched even today, as comedic violence has taken centre stage as preference from, among the public. Going to the movies is a social event. We could go to see films with significant others and are affected by the experience in a social context. In conclusion, one could argue that within the UK film industry, there has been a far more liberal view towards transgressive borders. Its institutional position in society has changed. Without it, there is only the reality of literature and our lives that today, personally, I think the film of cinema has never looked so prosperous. We should be experimenting with new ideas. Comedic violence from Quentin Tarantino shouldn't be viewed in a negative way, but as a form of transgressive art that should be admired. Where are